and uh, our specific role is obviously heat, so hence why we're here today. Um, and what I'm, I'm basically going to talk to you is about heat mapping uh, and about a Scottish heat mapping project that, that I've been uh, running and working with. The, at the bottom, you can see a, a number of logos and different things. I, I possibly also could have put um, ACOM on this. Um, the heat map was uh, originally was back in the 1997. They had a Scotland-wide one. It wasn't as granular as they needed, and they thought, hey, we need to have something at a building level. Uh, AECOM came in and did the, the first two pilots, and we did ones in, in Highland and Perth and Kinross and Fife, where I'm seconded from. Um, and then uh, I was brought in Scottish government and said, well, how about doing this for the whole of Scotland? And, and uh, uh, Carbon Trust and Ramble held, helped us do that other one. So I'll, I'll name check them to start with. So heat. I know you've heard all this before and heard of the things. And you heard from, from DEC in terms of the UK heat demand being 44%. In Scotland, heat demand and heat and cooling is higher than that. We're talking about 55% for, uh, for heating and cooling. And that does not, doesn't include electrical. So it's even higher than that. And the others are uh, transportation and, and electricity. So enormous demand. About 80% about of it is from natural gas in terms of, uh, and so huge reliance on natural gas within that process. And about 2.6 billion. We already spend a significant amount of money on heat in Scotland. Uh, and we could spend that money smartly or in different ways. And if we do it, like the finances were saying, in a way that doesn't increase our overall costs, so we're just, we're just paying back on the money we're saving, we can spend an awful lot and get an awful lot of value over time if, if we go for different energy systems. The one thing I'd say in terms of that is the heat generation policy statement is, is the Scottish Government policy and driver on heat. Um, and this is the sort of founding document we've put forward. This is a draft that's been put out. A number of you will have consulted on this. Uh, and it's going to come out again next year in terms of a finalised document. And this tells a story from, from businesses, for individuals and, and communities. It tells a story from uh, individual delivery of heat to networks of heat. And all the different solutions in terms of unused heat, in terms of heat storage. All those stories we've been talking about, trying to give that cohesive message and what the potential is for 2050. So I'd really encourage you to, if you haven't seen it, to read through it. And then there's this heat hierarchy, which again, people have sort of talked about and sort of thought through. Again, a simple way of us just trying to reinforce that process before. And, and people have said it today. Energy efficiency, what the most efficient way of using your energy, then yes, use carbon sources at the start. You know, it's, it's, if they're easy to use, they're simple to use, if they're economically viable to use, don't stop and hold to the renewable if, if that other one works in the system. But aiming towards that renewable target. And if you've got a renewable that works for you economically now, go for it. So, um, Scottish Government uh, encouraging local authorities as well to take a strategic approach in district heating in a lot of different <laughs> places. Um, we've got uh, the Scottish planning policy, which again was mentioned this morning. But I think the main thing in terms of the local plan thing is that they, planning policies have to have heat maps. They have to use heat maps. And another sort of thing to get your brains into in this overall picture, in, in England they have Hindu, uh, in Scotland we have the Heat Network Partnership. And these, uh, this is your, if you're going to do a heat network, this is where you go. And I think the main thing, we'll get a bit more about from, from Alan Crooks uh, just later on in this session about it, but if you have a heat network proposal, they have a form, and, and here, oops, let's go back, uh, they have a form which basically tells you here um, the, the link to it. Fill in that form and get your name on it and get your form registered. And they've got a whole lot of partners who will uh, help you through that process. Right. Bit of a rush there. Heat maps. Um, heat maps, you can, you can see this heat map right now if you wanted to, if you haven't if you have enough access and you had a little, little, um, little iPad. Um, it's on the Scottish Government website. There's this very simple link, forward slash heat map. Um, you can basically go in, put the map up. Uh, you can look at your local area, you can look at the different layers in it, you can look at the heat demand layer, you can look at the energy supply layer, which has a significant body of energy users across there, about 5,000 <coughs> different energy users, energy uh, supply points or, or potential. Um, we, we have um, a district heat layer, um, we have uh, a tenure layer looking at social housing and also a geothermal layer, and I'll talk you through a few of those sort of in this process. The heat map was created with uh, data from across the public sector in Scotland, so it's, it's basically created with, with free data. Um, we've got 2.8 million buildings in here, of which 2.2 million have more than one thing. They have quite a, a detail of data. We might have it's a, um, it's a domestic or non-domestic. We might have that it's a flat, it's a semi, the floor area, the age, or maybe it's got insulation. Lots of different factors about these, these properties. 
Uh, all that information is gathered together uh, and is provided at a building level, basically uh, for in, in a map format. The exciting thing about that is you can then do everything from strategic policy mapping right the way down to individual feasibilities. You can look at it and just circle an area and say, well, what's the heat demand of that area? Heat demand out. You could say, I'm putting a heat map pipe in and that sort of thing. What's 50 metres from that pipe? How close is that block of, you know, from, the, from the River Clyde? If the River Clyde could deliver us X amounts of gigawatts of, of heat, how much of Glasgow could be caught there? You can reverse engineer it. It gives you all those possibilities all the way through, at an, at a, almost like a flick of a switch. And uh, one of the contractors, Ramble, who, who did this work for us, they said that this, this map, if the, their study they did in Edinburgh, would have saved them six weeks in work collecting data. And it's instantly available. Hot or cool, we want it all, to be plain with words. But um, a lot of people have covered these sort of things. But the, the heat map basically has some potential heat. Um, there's, there's some work we're doing at the moment in terms of, uh, of rivers, rock, locks, reservoirs, and seawater. Um, we've got uh, some sort of solar thermal and, uh, and, and ground source heat pump potential in there, particularly for the geothermal stuff, which I'll show you. Um, unused excess heat, uh, there's, there's quite a few sources of that within that. And, and the data we've been trying to look for, and it's not always available, is this, is this temperature, volume, and flow. Um, and sometimes we've got some, sometimes we haven't. But we've also got systems in place to try and get that data where we know it's been created within the system. I think the key thing about all data sources are they often weren't created for this process. So um, we've, we've had to create it and then sort of rework it and make it work in. But the exciting thing, I think, about the Scotland heat map is that we created it in one go, and we're going to recreate it hopefully annually, in one go. And so that data source talks to itself across the entirety of Scotland. So if you want to have a project in Aberdeen and a project in Glasgow, and you want them to be able to share the data, they can do it. If you have the whole central belt, you can do it. If you have an authority over the moment, that data is incredibly flexible in terms of that process. So what does it look like? Um, well, it, what we've done is we've, we've chosen a grid system um, uh, within the thing. So basically, grid's going down. It's statistically more accurate in terms of where of sort of measuring data. And the colour schemes, if there's 10% of men, uh, broadly 8 to 10% of men, are colorblind. Um, so the, it works with colorblind folks as well. So you won't have a problem with that. But sort of jumping down through the system, you can see the granularity has go to 500 meters. And then it's leap closer, leap into to Edinburgh here. Give you a bit of variation, because I knew a lot of people who do Glasgow, this side of the country. But you can see the sort of level and the detail right in the middle of, of Edinburgh of, of those sort of those heat densities. So you can already understand that sort of heat density of it. And this version is, is available on the web, so you can actually go right into that and even ask what the de de um, demand is for one of those, those individual buildings. People were talking about uh, the coast and the sea. So I, I got my, uh, my, my trusty colleague, uh, uh, Andrew Seaton, um, to, to basically do something. He, we, well, there's a data set called, uh, called Settlement, and it's all settlements over 500, over 10,000, over 125,000 properties in the whole of Scotland. And I said, tell me all the ones that are within a kilometre of the sea, and what's the heat demand of all those properties? And so he did it, and he made it in a nice colour scheme, so you've got the different colour levels, so you can sort of feel for the high and low sort of demand of it. Um, but the amazing thing, if, you, if I go for that, the total heat demand of Scotland is 87 terawatt hours from our heat map. Um, and if you go within that scheme, that thing, 31 terawatt hours are next or within a kilometre of the sea. Now, some of that, has to be said, will be high-grade heat requirements, but an awful lot of that will be low-grade heat that could be provided by heat pumps and all those other sort of technologies. And we know the heat around Scotland is a really good temperature sort of area of that. I think I was looking at some figures, of, you know, it wouldn't go more to depth, about 8 degrees, be pretty standardised sort of temperature on that. So you'd be able to take out that sort of temperature and deliver it for a significant body of Scotland. Um, unused excess heat. We've got figures in here. We've got a load of heat pump stuff, but I've, just, I've only taken the water wastewater treatment works. We've got them all in there with the figures of flow and uh, they're coming out of all those works. You can see how there are a lot of them around the coast and so that. But we know where they are in relation to all the settlements. So when you're modelling the settlement, you can say, how close is the wastewater treatment work? What is the demand opportunity from that that supply we can supply back to our system? We've got combined heat and power systems in there. We've got cooling towers. You must be cooling something. There's a potential for an energy source within that. 
We've got energy from waste in there. We've got mine workings. And we've got the, a report that was done for, uh, by, by Ecom and uh, the British Geological Survey for the Scottish Government. And one element of it was assessing the resource and the opportunity. And this map basically shows you where the, where the greatest density and the greatest depth of mine workings are within, within Scotland. And you can relate that again to settlement. We've got uh, the hot sedimentary aquifers, as Professor Young was sort of mentioning. Uh, and we've also got the, the hot granites. And again, you mentioned. We've got air source heat pumps and, uh, and things. I, I put, throw these in as, as a bit of a devil, devil's thing, you know, sort of in the process. But there's that thought of it being augmenting other sort of heat works. And these are some of the large ones that are across Scotland. We've got solar thermal. Um, and again, the one that kind of strengths me in terms of here is, if you don't know about it, in Denmark, they've got huge solar thermal arrays, which they basically are the size of football stadiums and huge, huge tanks. And they do three-month storage. And they talk about one degree loss ever, uh, per month. Um, in, in terms of these, these temperature stores, heat it up during the winter, augment their system in the, in, in the, in the winter. Uh, in the, in the winter. And, and that, if you think about those sort of things, it's a way of understanding what our energy our need and opportunity is. And, and if we can take in a source like that and it, it takes away um, one of that, that sort of peak load issues or something like that, you could use it for that process. So clever, clever stuff. And Scotland, Scotland, Scotland is a land of rivers. This is Scotland without the land and just showing the rivers. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that quite beautiful? I, I, want to say, it's, I, I want to have it on my wall, actually. But it's like a fingerprint, isn't it? The important things are, as people were saying, is there sufficient flow? Um, uh, what's the temperature? What's the volume? How much can you abstract or put it back into it? But, but there is an amazing water resource. And even looking at it simply, and it was kind of one of my targets, and thanks to Deck for throwing out a, a, a provocative paper which, which showed a few cities on it that made me think, oh, we better get up and catch up with them on this process. So, so that made me sort of do a bit more work. Uh, and we've taken the, the, the load, heat demand load for Perth. Like, say, you just draw a line around it and say, tell me what the heat demand is. Very simple from the heat map. Um, and then uh, the, uh, here at the Centre for Ecology and Hydrology, you can all see this website. Uh, you can find out there's lots of red spots on it, and each red spot tells you um, a water flow. And you can basically go into it, and it brings up that, um, that nice chart for each one, and it tells you the water flow through the year um, of levels of water going through the system. So you can understand it. Freely available on the web, information. And then the other one that I'm showing you here is Ordnance Survey. The Ordnance Survey, SEPA and Scottish Government, have developed a new system where they're basically, uh, they've, they've mapped all the, the rivers in Scotland, and they've cut them up into bits, so you've ended up got the, the river catchment, the river, and then the river into bits. And why that's really crucially important for anybody who's mainly into data, uh, like I ended up in this job, is it means that if you've put a piece of data, you can tie it to that point. And if you can tie it to that point, it's on the map. And that means all those data resources that people have got about temperature and flow and all those things that we've not really been able to put in one place, because of this system, we'll be able to put. And that's being launched later on this year. And all public sector get hold of this, this, this map resource because it's built into the same audit survey map contract that all the public sector get. So really exciting times in, the, in this area. And just because I'm not going to get caught out with everybody else, we've got something about Glasgow. Um, and, in, and here's the, the heat demand of that oblong. Uh, and notice that it's more than the whole of Perth, just as a, as a slight sort of point of it. Um, and, uh, and, and as we were saying about the, the heat demand opportunity from the, from the river, but even in terms of the... Um, uh, we've also got two wastewater treatment works nearby. And there's more data in the heat map, but I just pulled out a couple of figures for you to get a sort of a feel for it, of what those sort of things were. And um, I'll, let, I'll let Dave and others um, do the figures and sort of work through it. The point is, there is an awful lot of energy out there that we can make a better use of. Uh, if you think about Scotland, Scotland has immense renewable resources. Uh, and one of the things I'm really intrigued in is if we take all those renewables and we think about them... Uh, People talk about you know, blockages on the grid and all those sorts of things. If, what if we look up above those blockages and look at all those communities? Why don't we make all those communities run off electric heat? It would be fairly cheap. You know, once, the more we get those spikes, the more we run out of that. I, I want that spike not to be just a time when you're basically you're thinking, oh, well, we'll maybe switch other things off. I want to grab all that heat so we don't use it at any other time. And so you've basically... You, thinking about a way that in, in Scotland we can, we can re-engineer our systems. And, and often district heating may well be one of those. So what can you do? Um, 
all but bar four local authorities, we won't mention them here, embarrass them, um, have received the heat map data. Hopefully within a month we'll get all 32 having the heat map data. You can go into a local authority, you can say, I'd like to see the heat map data, I'd like to work with it. Um, so they have it all, and it's, let's say, lots of different data sets. And essentially, think about it as um, uh, an energy, building energy uh, mapping tool. It's not just heat, it allows you to do any, build, any building mapping, really. Um, there's a publicly available data on the, you can use already, and we're hoping to make some of that um, open data. Um, and we're hoping also to uh, open the data up to public sector bodies as well. Um, and you can be licensed to have the data in certain conditions. Um, and go to the heat map, tell them about your network. Um, and um, basically, just, just consider the wider opportunities and feedback. And I think a lot of the dis discussions today were talking about thinking that wider picture of what, how do you make a, a viable network. Bit of a romp through. Um, there's a link to the heat generation policy statement. So after today, you can go back and find it. There's the link on the, the map. Um, there's our uh, generic email address so that you can get all the heat team in one go. And then, like I say, talk to the heat network partnership. So. A quick rush through and keep you on time. Oh, there you go.